So if you're a Christian, a Catholic, specifically even an Eastern Orthodox, in this case where this game kind of revolves around Eastern Orthodoxy, and you like reading narratives, uh, stories, books, movies, in this case a video game that has this strong uh, Christian influence or backdrop, you may find this game interesting. Now this is a Catholic-based channel, and I've done other videos on, on uh, video games specifically, and kind of more so how you have to kind of be careful with them, and and more so how there's some uh, definitely some games out there whenever they use a Christian backdrop or they incorporate Christianity in some in some fashion, they are usually knocking it and not putting it in the best light. This game's a little bit different. Different. And this game, honestly, I was kind of surprised when I first heard about it. I got a gist of what the story was, and I thought oh, this doesn't sound like a really a good game that a Christian should be playing, um, because it has a backdrop where you're essentially you're a you're a witch and you're like a necromancer, basically. Um, I'll get into the story in a second. Um, however, once I started learning more about what the what the actual narrative backdrop was and kind of how they were how Christianity and again in this case Eastern Orthodoxy was really incorporated into the into the context of the story. I thought it was, I thought it was fair. And I thought it was also interesting from a historical and also educational perspective, learning about some of these things, uh, specifically that you, you get to, you get to see, and I've kind of heard about this, but I didn't look into it too much. I'm, I was aware of it. Just how much, uh, really Eastern European culture in their, their previous kind of pagan myths and mythology and stories, how those started to kind of blend together and or I shouldn't say blend, but were incorporated into the religion of the time, which was, uh, in this case, again, orthodoxy, Eastern orthodoxy. But you, you found this as well in uh, other parts of Europe that had more of a Catholic, strong foundational Catholic heritage. We found these same things uh, present themselves as well. In fact, some of this stuff is still present to this day. So what you're kind of seeing is this narrative story that, first I'll get into that first, where you are, according to the developers, they, you're a... Um, this is tried to they tried to use as much of an authentic uh, backdrop in Russian folklore specifically. This is taking place in the uh, late 19th century, and uh, you can kind of gather that just from even though it, even though there was like Eastern Catholicism in Russia at that time, it was very sparse and not it wasn't too big. In this area that they're talking about, it's this the district is a Cheridan district. Uh, this most definitely, and you can kind of see that, even though it's not explicit, you, you'll gather uh, once you get into this, uh, that this is a Eastern Orthodox uh, community, as much of Russia was at the time. And I'll, I will say this before I just, if, even though it's not kind of explicit when I'm getting into the content of this video, there's a lot of Christian influence, a lot of Orthodox Christian influences in this. And even though, like I said, this is a Catholic based channel, uh, a lot of, just because Orthodoxy and Catholicism are so similar, uh, I think you might appreciate some of this and just might gather a lot from the history. What this game does a really good job at is, according again to the developers, they tried to make this as accurate as possible, where they took these, the narrative is based on, they called it, uh, the word is uh, Balachka, Bilach I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that rightly, right, but it's um, basically, a Balachka is a story of Russian folklore that allegedly, according to their culture, is based on true events where people, just how people kind of conduct themselves and met with different spirits or um, essentially how the, the spirit world kind of blended with their own world. And it's just this kind of story and mythos surrounding that, again, incorporating with the backdrop of um, orthodoxy as well, which is a whole different subject area called folk orthodoxy. If you guys are interested, you can kind of check that out. And so there's a lot of history in this. What they do is a lot of times you'll be reading stuff and they give you like a word and you can kind of put your cursor over it and you can kind of see what the definition of that word is. And I found myself a lot of times kind of learning from this game uh, it's definitely an educational game i'll say that as well because you'll learn different terms in order to kind of solve maybe the answer of what it is you kind of have to maybe research it and look up the word yourself and you kind of learn what, what that word was um and so even if you're someone who's even interested in eastern orthodoxy i would say uh not to say you know as a catholic i'm not interested in like converting to that but i'm interested in what the history of that faith was and especially you'll see a lot of parallels uh, in classical uh, Catholicism found in this as well, just because um, of the history. But w getting into what the actual narrative plot of the game is, you are essentially a witch, which doesn't sound good off the surface, right? If, especially in my previous videos, I talked about uh, being careful about the content we are going to uh, consume. And if it's if, if a Christian, maybe should be l examining type of content. So at first I thought, okay, you're playing a witch. Is that really a game you want to be playing? A game where you're essentially a necromancer? However, once you kind of realize that this is really a, the gameplay is really like a 
almost like a choose your own adventure reading story where you kind of are reading different situations. You can pick and choose your path. Uh, and there's different outcomes based on your decisions. So you're this witch who essentially is or is orphaned and you're adopted by this. It's not really, it's not clear to me how much those demons are actually influencing him. But also that is part of kind of the story as well. But what is interesting, well, sorry, to keep going with the story, you're basically orphaned into his care and you're like, kind of like a witch in training, although you're kind of hesitant on becoming one. You eventually lose your love of your life. He is banished to hell, which you're not, I don't, I forget the reason why he was, but in order to kind of your motivation as this as this girl, young girl wanting to become a witch is you're finding this as the only solution possible to save his soul from hell, basically. And so you inevitably have to become this witch and you're using these powers for that. That is your primary influence in using them. It's not clear now if you want to be if you have bad or negative influences or bad or positive influences in becoming a witch. But the. The uh, the motivation is kind of up to you. You can basically, there's a sin counter in the game, so you can choose whether or not to commit sins. And at the end of the game, I'm not sure how that plays out. Basically, at the end, I'm not, not sure. But that will influence the ending of the game. So that, that, that alone is kind of interesting to see how that will play out. But judging how the game is so far, how they, how they kind of... Um, how they've used Christianity in this point, I can't see them really bastardizing it. I would assume that if you have a lot of negative sins, you'll have a negative outcome. If you've committed no sins, you probably have a positive outcome. That's what I would assume from how the, the direction and the storyline is kind of going. So it's kind of the moral choice is really up to you, whether you want to be a good character or a bad character in the game. The actual gameplay, I think, is kind of interesting because I'm sure these other games are like that. I don't really play this that many video games. To begin with, I've never played that this type of gameplay before, but I know this is like a genre of games, what's called like a deck builder game, where to me it's like you're reading, it's it's half combination of reading a story and interacting with the story, and I'd say education, because you're getting some educational backdrop with the story, which I think is also kind of interesting. Uh, but then the other part of the game is basically like a card game, give or take. So, I mean, you're just, you're dishing out, you're having these battles, and you there's some strategy involved with basically like a card game. So... It, to kind of sum this game up to someone who either doesn't play these types of games, you're basically reading a choose your own adventure style book, but with an interactive card game that kind of decides your battles and winning and losing. And there's like RPG elements where you can, your character gets upgraded. You can, you have an ability to kind of choose different attributes. Um, your actual deck of cards you have will change uh, throughout, you know, your different defeats with demons and stuff like that. Now, specifically to how much Christianity is really in this game, I was actually surprised there was a lot. I mean, when I first started playing it and looking into it, I'm like, well, maybe it's just it's, it's kind of subtle. Maybe it's in the backdrop. Uh, but there really is a lot, in my opinion. And I think there's a lot of just, you'll find, you'll find a lot of classical Orthodox dogma actually incorporated into when you go into the encyclopedia and kind of read some of the things that they're talking about really surprised and i'm only just a little bit into the game and just unlock different things but a lot of the background and story isn't just about russian myth i mean in my opinion it's half russian myth and half uh teaching you about what eastern european orthodoxy uh was really like and kind of how where those influences honestly still are so i found that really interesting i found it really educational i found myself a lot of times kind of pausing it and then going on wikipedia or looking up some of these terms and kind of going down little rabbit holes, which I thought was really interesting. Even if you're not Russian and you're not interested in that specific, that specific part of the story or um, history, I think a lot of these have carryovers to other elements of European or just Catholic culture and Orthodox culture in general. So I think that was kind of cool. How they kind of, which also interesting is again, you might think it's, you think that when you first kind of hear about this game, you're like, well, you're just kind of this bad witch and you're a witch. And it's all about witchcraft. And how does that really play out with? This idea of like you're controlling demons, you're conjuring demons, and even the guy, old Igor, who's like the main warlock character, he is essentially still has a fear and belief in God. And a lot of times you'll see these things where like, you know, you have a choice to, you know, to say a prayer to before you walk into a, into like a, a haunted area or before you set off course. And there's a lot of religion. There's a lot of respect for uh, God in the game, which might sound kind of like counterintuitive but i think if it's when you look into the history you found that this was kind of the the belief at that time among kind of these rural communities where they were still had a history and, and mythos around like the spirit realm interacting with their with their um 
their day-to-day lives, um, but they also had a greater respect for God as being the protector from the spirit realm. But the other other areas throughout the day, they kind of had to, had to manage, you know, around these individuals or these I shouldn't say individuals, know. this spirit world in the day-to-day life and how they navigated it was kind of like their the different rituals and practices that they did. So really interesting. So even though you're a witch and you're like this, you're conjurer, you find throughout a lot of the characters, they still have this uh, foundational belief and respect for God. For God. So I thought that was uh, kind of interesting. But tons of Christian influences throughout the game. Uh, even when things like, uh, I mean, you simply as the, uh, especially from a Catholic and Orthodox perspective, you actually can buy things like the prosphora or the, this it's the leavened bread used in Orthodox churches, which is basically, again, you essentially can use the Eucharist as like a, as a power up in the game. So you really don't find that too often in many games. There was another game where I, I, I know it was the case and I'm, I'm drawing a blank on what game that was where you actually could use like the Eucharist uh, for like um, as a means to kind of level your character up or power your character up. Uh, but anyways, uh, my point was I thought it's I thought it's a very interesting game. I think it's a game that if you um, you know if you're interested in history and you're approaching it from a sense of like a a novel like reading a novel an interactive novel that's kind of how I would describe it an interactive novel with a card game is basically what this is now it's not to say there's no questionable content i i don't really know so much about how the narrative will play out but for instance i believe i believe you still have an option of kind of free will or choice if you want to play like a, a true good character but for instance you part of your what what the mechanics of the game are you get these these chorts or i believe at least that's how you pronounce it they're essentially like your your demons that you're bidding and since you're a witch you have to kind of take on these chorts or demons and in order to avoid them inflicting pain on you, uh, they're essentially demons. They, they want to wreak havoc and cause pain or destruction. You have the option at the start of each day to send them out and kind of wreak havoc or curse people. Sometimes a villager might ask you to curse people. But what I've found so far in the game is that you don't have to do any of that. So you don't have to take up the, the villagers on the request to curse another person. You can deny that. Um, and you can deny the um, the church to kind of go out in their bidding. Because you will get it. Like I said, there is that sin counter. And if you tell the, the demons to go out and do something, you'll get a reward, like a monetary reward and like a level up in the game, but you'll also increase your sin count. Uh, in which case, what I've found to be so far is if you don't do that, you don't inflict any sins upon yourself, but maybe you don't gain as much health. You might have a, uh, a sacrifice your own health, and that's what they say. If you don't use the demons in the game, they're going to inflict damage upon you. So I thought I found that kind of an interesting kind of moral choice to make in the game, which is uh, instead of inflicting pain on others, you're going to take that self-sacrifice upon yourself. So even though you're doing a bad thing, using these demons and a, a negative means to an end, uh, you maybe can take that sacrifice upon yourself on, on you, and again, the, the motivations of the character, which is to resurrect, or I should say, bring the your fallen, your fallen lost love from hell back to earth uh, in, a, in a means of self-sacrifice. So it'll be interesting to see how the story kind of plays out. And uh, I'm assuming the way I'm kind of already getting these vibes that, yes, the demons are kind of, you're kind of controlling these demons, but you're kind of made this bargain with them. Uh, and yes, it seems like they kind of influence you and they have this pull on you as well. So I think it's, I, I think at the end, it, it does seem to be like it's a moral choice on, you know, if you don't take the demons up on their offer, which you'll, you'll find interactions with demons on like the side of the road and you can entertain if you want to interact with them or not. Which I should say, sometimes you don't know. You don't know if what you, if your choice you made was a good one or a bad one. So that's also interesting to see how that plays out. You might think, well, do I entertain this demon by sitting next to him and listening to his story? Or do I brush him off to the side and walk away from him? So each of those outcomes has a different situation that could play out, which I also found was interesting and just part of like a natural story-driven narrative. So that's probably the gist of what I want to get at in this game. I want to get out to you guys. If you're considering getting it, if you're interested in Christian themes, in my opinion so far from playing it, uh, I have a decent amount of time in the game, not like playing it like hardcore or anything. I'm kind of casually picking it up and playing it, which, which is something that I, I think is really cool. It's a game where you can, it's not going to take up so much of your time. It's not an addictive, addictive game. It, I really treat it as sitting down for like a story slash card game for maybe 30 minutes and you can put it away. 
Um, for me, I don't think it's a, I, I think the moral choice as far as what the story content I think is, in my opinion, is okay. Uh, the fact that you get to choose to make good or bad decisions uh, and see, see how the story plays out. I, I think is okay. Not to mention the huge uh, historical and educational uh, knowledge you kind of start to be, to gain from this game. So I found it very enriching. It's it's kind of encouraging me to kind of look more into this on the side, which I, th- I found is I found is pretty interesting. So uh, definitely pick it up if any of this stuff sounds interesting to you. If it sounds kind of questionable, and this hopefully this helps you another way. Hopefully this does a service as well. If it seems like hey this you know what this is a little too much for me personally. I can understand that. I can totally respect that as well. I emphasize with that as well. So uh, definitely uh, let me know as well. So I'm curious your comments, if you guys got further than I have so far, or if you, not to spoil anything, but um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback about this game, uh, let me know. And thanks again for watching.